<laughs> All right, week number 21. Let's start with prayer. Okay, close your eyes. Thank you, Lord, for gathering us here. And we just pray, Lord, that um, we have a blessed time doing the activity today as we learn about the book of Isaiah. And uh, we thank you, Lord, for the many prophecies of the coming Messiah that we can learn about. And uh, thankfully, Lord, that uh, we live in a day where we've been able to see those prophecies fulfilled. So we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'll skip over the three rules for today, just for the sake of time. My thing is skipping on me. And uh, yeah, well done to Matea. So Matea's here on time today, so we've got her attendance pin. All right, remember, so every time you come to four, you're going to get another one. So you can only miss one more. Um, before you start losing some of your pins. All right, so to make sure you don't skip any Bible club. All right, we're looking at uh, book number 23 today, the book of Isaiah. Now we're getting into the more unfamiliar parts of your Bible. Maybe uh, you haven't read these big, long books. These are called the major prophets. Why are they called the major prophets? These were the prophets that lived during the time of the kings. And the major prophets are the major prophets because they had a lot of prophecies. They had the big books. So you have Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, and then you have a whole bunch of minor prophets. A lot of people didn't, don't even know all the names. Sometimes they're hard to remember all the, the minor prophets and they're not as well known. That's why they're known as the minor prophets. Simon, don't play with your shoelace, please. Okay? Not during Bible club. You should be paying attention. Remember one of the rules? Yeah, paying attention and sitting quietly. So this is, a, this is a picture of Isaiah, somebody drew of Isaiah, an old man with a scroll. He wrote quite a bit for God, you know, he, used quite, he was used quite a bit. Um, if you know how many, who, who knows how many chapters his book was in the Bible? Does anyone know? Put your hand up if you want to take a cake of guess. Simon? 23. 23, a bit more than that. Who wants to have another guess? How many books? Quite a lot of books. I'll give you a hint. It's the same number of books. So the number of chapters in his book is the same number of books of the Bible. How many is that? Are you going to put your hand up if you want to say something, Simon? Oh, a bit more than that? A bit more than that? You want to have another guess? Keep going. Keep going. One more. 66, that's right. 66 books of the Bible. So there's 66 books inside the Bible. So what's interesting about the book of Isaiah, if you didn't know, there's 66 chapters in Isaiah. And some people think of the book of Isaiah as like a mini Bible, because if you read through the book of Isaiah, every chapter in Isaiah seems to line up. Very, like it, has very, it has similarities between the books of the Bible. So the first chapter of uh, Isaiah will have something very similar to Genesis and so on and so forth. The last chapter of Isaiah will have something very similar to Revelation. So people just found that interesting that, you know, God is actually speaking through Isaiah and just, you know, making this sort of mini Bible through the book of Isaiah. Yes, do you want to say something, Mateo? Psalm's the biggest chapter. No. Psalm's the biggest chapter. Psalm's the that's right. Psalms is the biggest book in the Bible. That's right. So Isaiah is not the biggest book in the Bible, but what's interesting about Isaiah is it has those 66 chapters that line up with the book. So some of the things we learn in Isaiah, and what makes Isaiah a very interesting book, is, is that Isaiah has many prophecies about the coming Messiah, about Jesus coming. So who remembers how Jesus was born? Remember how he was born of a virgin, of the Virgin Mary? Well, that was actually prophesied when we say prophesy, it means that Isaiah told the future. God told him things that were going to happen in the future. Look at what he says in 7.14. He says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. So this is Isaiah. Isaiah lived 700 years before Jesus, but he knew that Jesus would be born of a virgin. Isn't that cool? So that's one thing that he knew. He also knew that this child that was to be born of a virgin, which is this one here. See, so I've got a picture here. So she, they weren't married yet, but she was already with child. That's what Isaiah told about. 
And Isaiah knew as well, because this is a prophecy from Isaiah, that this child that was going to be born was going to be the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Look at this. For unto us a child is born. See, a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. You see, God himself came for us to die for our sins. Right? That's how much he loves you, that he came to die for your sins. And Isaiah knew about this. He told, he foretold the coming Messiah. This is a big theme throughout his book. And the last one I want to share with you today so this is the coming Messiah. This is the son that is given and shall be born. The child that is born, he's wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. And the last one I want to show you from Isaiah is he actually prophesied of the suffering of Jesus as well. The fact that he would die on the cross for our sins and he would suffer all the iniquity of us all. Look at this, Isaiah 53 verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. Have you ever seen the sheep when they're not directed? They just go and do whatever. They stay together, but they wander off. And the Bible's saying here, we're like sheep. We go astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. Hey, come take a seat, guys. We've turned everyone to his own way. See, rather than going God's way, we're going our own way. Hey, hey, guys. We're looking at the book of Isaiah today. Look at this. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. This is all of our sin was put on Jesus. And Isaiah, 700 years before Jesus, told us about that. Isn't that interesting? So not only did Isaiah write a book, how many chapters was it? Well, put your hand up, Simon. 66 books. Remember to put your hand up if you want to say something. 66 books. That was like a little mini Bible. He told us that Jesus would be born of a virgin. He also told us that Jesus coming, hello, come take a seat. Jesus coming would be wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. And not only that, Isaiah told us that when Jesus would come, he would suffer for us. And that's what we learn about on the cross, where Jesus died for our sins. And what do we have to do to be saved? All we have to do is put our faith on him. We just have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. So today we've got an activity for you guys. Hopefully we've got enough time to finish it. <coughs> but we're just going to have an activity to remind us of this verse, of who Jesus is. Unto us, let's read this together. So Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us... A child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Okay, so let's stand up. We're going to Put some chairs around the table there. Sorry, we're running a little behind today. So we'll go to the back, we'll put some chairs around and we've got a little craft activity for everyone. Here. <laughs> Thank you, Simon. <laughs>